All right, friend, what you going by tonight? Um, good people for life. Good people for life? Mm hmm Good people for life. Okay, so put your right hand up and your left hand on your word, wherever you decide your word is. Mm hmm Put your right hand up mm -hmm. and your left hand on your word, wherever you decide that your word is. Mm -hmm. Mind you on leave. I'm cracking up. You're laughing on your heart, your leg, wherever you want to leave it. <laughs> but you're going to hold it just like that. Okay. All right. Do you solemnly agree we have your permission to post this across all of our social media platforms? Sure. Is there anything, and I do mean anything, that's off limits you don't want us to ask you about? Um, no. Okay. If we do ask you something that's off limits, do you understand you can say no, pass, or let's move on? Sure. All right. Let's get it. Okay, literally, it's no pressure. I'm your host, Bangum Bug. It's your girl, just K for real. And we got a special guest. She already introduced herself, so tell us where you're originally from. I'm from originally Atlanta, Georgia. I'm from Decatur, where it's greater. Okay, come on, Decatur. Mm -hmm. Okay, so did you uh, grow up both your parents? Yes. And what's, uh, what's your relationship like with your dad? Wonderful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, um, I guess, um, give me, like, a traumatic experience, like, you went through before, like, the age of, like, 18. Hmm. Having my wig snakes on. If you want to consider that, or I just said with the fat in my wig. Ooh, having your wig snatched out. Who mm -hmm. snatched it out? I had a girl at school, Decatur High, mm -hmm. where I got kicked out. And I had to go to an alternative school with the rest of my brothers and sisters. What's yeah, fighting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would have fought too. Over a girl? I mean, over a guy, I mean. Well, no. If you want to talk about that, bunch of hating back then, the bullying, which is not, like now, it's more forcible, but then it was not. So it was more like bullying, and it was a bunch of my friends, quote unquote. And uh, by them calling themselves being my friends or whatnot, I was able to do a lot of things as the rest of them. I was more of a job girl, a sports girl. Curfew, have to be in the house at a certain time, brother and sister, babysit, whatever. So I couldn't do some things that most of them could do. Okay, um, I guess uh, something you um, you got attached to when you knew it was going to have a bad ending. A relationship. What happened? He gone. He gone. Oh, he, he just left you out of nowhere? Nah, he didn't leave me out of nowhere. He had, he had a side tick, if that's what you want to call it. Mm. And I had to get the bounce. How you find out? She called my phone. And she called my phone and said she knew about me, so he got smacked with the phone. Oh, so she went through his phone? <laughs> no. She called his phone. And when she called his phone, I answered it. Called it back. And that's why he got smacked out of, got smacked with the phone out of his seat. Cheap shot. So don't um <laughs> so um so when so do you think you ever allow a, a guy to cheat so you know you can keep your relationship? Would I allow him to cheat? Yeah. Would you eventually allow somebody to cheat <clears throat> so you can keep a long relationship? No, because if he wanna cheat, he can cheat, but I don't want him to cheat, cheat. No, he would not be in a long relationship with me. No, that's right. What's some good game your dad gave you since your relationship is wonderful? Well, the good game my dad, my dad gave me is if you want to go out with a guy and he's going to take you out, first of all, don't go out and don't come home with no wet panties. And he didn't give you nothing to go buy no soap, no rag, no order, no anything, no bush, nothing. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, straight like that. My daddy was from the hood. Okay. Well, I ain't going to say from the hood, you know. But my daddy was from John Russell South. And... You know, so he just put us on game. The girls and everything. That's like an old saying, though. Don't come in with a wet ass and a dry purse. That, my dad that's don't. What they do. Let me turn this off. I, I ain't never hear my guy. mama say no shit like that, though. Huh? I said, I ain't never hear my mama say nothing like that, but I heard it before. My mama say, F them dudes, you focus on your money and your school, them dudes gonna be there. And I stuck with that. All they want is your coochie and da 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 And so I knew that. That's why I got homie energy. Everybody my friend. Hey, brother, friend. That's right. Okay, um, <clears throat> good advice Um, you just couldn't take. Staying with a man that got a, even with your man, if he cheat on you, then 
that what you said is good is right. Well, you know, man, she, um, you know, you can just deal with him. If you love him, you'll stay by him. You'll stay on his side. Sure. Whatever. So I was not riding with that. I agree. I don't think that's good advice either. Mm -hmm. I don't think I could have stuck with that. If you love him. You supposed to. Why he cheating? He don't love me. He, he got an addiction to hoes. So. Right. He don't love me enough to, ki to kill his addiction. You know, I got, if somebody got an addiction, they ain't really got nothing to do with you. Exactly. You need to love me more than your addiction. That's like you got an addiction to hit, hitting women. I'm supposed to be like, oh, but he love me though. He just like, he like hitting people. Mm -hmm. right. Addiction don't have nothing to do with the person, man. Like, have right. you seen, like, when I seen DMX talking to um, his son, mm -hmm. and he was saying, you got to get off drugs to have a relationship with me. He, this nigga been smoking crack since a teenager. Right. Like, there's something, like, that ain't got nothing to do with you. Like, Yeah, exactly. So, if you don't love me more than that, it has nothing to do with me, so it's also not my responsibility to endure it. You got your stuff that you like. You like, I don't like it. You got to go. You got to go. I feel you. That's how you think it works, baby. That is how it works. Because mm -hmm. if you love somebody, you sp just like if I love you and you cheating on me and it hurts me, I'm supposed to put myself to the side to stick out with you because you like cheating. But you're supposed to put yourself to the side to do something that I need, which is not cheat on me. Right. And then you put yourself to the side to right. do what I say and mm -hmm. obey and deal with whatever I got coming. Yeah, that's bull. Okay, mm -hmm. um... It's a quote to say, a big heart will always make you feel like you either did too much or didn't do enough. See, that's what I was talking about. I'm sorry, go ahead, finish. That was, that was, yeah, that's the end That's what I was talking about. So I guess tell me how you can relate to that quote if you ever felt like that. A big heart could do who? A big heart will always make you feel like you either did too much or didn't do enough. Well, I'm going to have to say that that don't stick too well with me. Because if you have a big heart, you're going to do from your heart. Mm -hmm. And if you feel like you didn't got to do enough, then they didn't deserve that heart. So if they gonna, if you're going to do something from your heart and you're going to do it big and you feel like you didn't do enough, <coughs> it's something you need to work on with yourself and mm -hmm. figure out what you did. And if you feel like you didn't do enough for them, then why did you do it? Hmm. Um. Allow you told to protect someone's feelings and allow you told to uh, hurt someone's feelings. He didn't do it. She didn't do it. I went there. I don't know. <laughs> Not my business. <laughs> Mind your business. Don't put me in it. Okay. She's talking about, I knew. <laughs> I knew he did it. I knew she did it. My mind is off of that, but I know what's going on. Right. <laughs> okay. I was like, I like you. <laughs> type of person you do crime with. <laughs> okay, uh, what puts a smile on your face on a regular basis? Life. Amen. That's it? Life, y'all, for inviting me to come here, to come on your show and to be on your hand to be a guest. Yes. Life is major. That's big. It's a lot of stuff. Okay, um, a person you feel like is for life and a person who is a, a good memory for your life. A person for life and a person who's a good memory for my life? A person who was a good memory for your life. Everyone. I don't have a specific um, category to say because I think that everybody, life, the people around you um, that love you, support you, um, that push you, motivate you, and help you. Something you thought was an accomplishment uh, before you were as mature as you are now. Girl, you're pretty. Thank you. That's a compliment for me. An accomplishment. Uh, 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 yeah. Oh, accomplishment. Oh, my bad. See, look. Mm -hmm. I'm okay. An accomplishment. Something you thought was a win what? until you got mature and now you feel like. Oh, Graduating from high school. It's not a win no more. It is a win. That's not a win no more. My bad. Mm -hmm. It ain't a win to me. So, you said that's not a win. Or if you're more mature, you feel like it wasn't as big as it was for you back then. That's a big one. Hmm. 
something is was say that again something that was an accomplishment but now that you've matured it's not as much of an accomplishment to you or oh, not as important basically that's not as important yeah. sneaking out the house <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a good one right here. Yeah. She's like, I made it. Right. I made it. And what was you doing when you were sleeping out? Hanging out with my homies, hanging out with my home girl. Doing stuff I know I shouldn't be doing, then trying to sneak back in the house. Did you make I it? Get caught. Oh, you got caught? Yeah. Dang. Mm -hmm. I was rooting for you in this story. No, nah, I got caught. <laughs> they was waiting. They was waiting? They was waiting. They knew. Oh. Mm -hmm. Did they beat you? No, nah, they took stuff. Okay, you got punishment. Yeah, I got Ooh, punishment. Ain't it worse than a whooping? Yep, it's really worse. Long time. It's like going to jail. And I still stuck out the house, but you know. I you still see Yeah. Oh, no, I got scared eventually. Yeah. My mother put an alarm system on the house, though. Like, every window, every door. She worked at night. She was like, don't let me even see this not on. Don't tell me you was walking the dog. I don't want to mm -hmm. see it. So I couldn't. I was so sad. I watched everybody that I love go to a party because my house was right where everybody was parking at and the, the party was like down there. I'm looking out the window like, bro, I wanted to sneak out the house so bad say I was walking the dog. I was just going to take the chance, but I was still scared. Yeah. Your yeah. punishment wasn't hard enough. Yeah, it was hard, but, you know. It was what it was. Hard like, I never do that shit. Again. I'm trying to tell you. If you were doing that, that, that wasn't, that wasn't your bad, thing. <laughs> But if it ain't teach you the lesson, I learned my lesson. I mean, you know, now as like as with the kids, I don't have kids, but with the kids that I do, I just let them know some things is not worth it because you do, you know, everything come with the consequences. Mm -hmm. And just because I did it, and I had brothers and sisters, which was six of us, so just because I did it, I didn't engage them to do it. So you saying you never had kids? No, I had had kids, but that's another story. So I'm saying, <laughs> ain't none of your kids alive, you saying? Yeah, they were still born. Well, the twins, one was still born and the twins had passed. So they lived by, like for an hour. So I don't too much discuss it like that. But, you know, it is what it is. It was a blessing. And I got to see them. So, you know. Yeah, I, um, it's a girl. I was, I think she, I don't know if it was mine or not, but. She had a baby that died in her stomach, and then the baby went to like a funeral home. Mm -hmm. Then the guy was like, "Do you want to see it?" I'm like, "No, I don't want to see no dead baby." Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, I wasn't attached to it like she was, because it was just like to me, it was just like that's normal. But the other hand, so many girls be like, "I'm pregnant," and something happens. So I was just like, "Okay." One of my homeboys had a like had that situation basically, but the baby came out and but pass or whatever mm -hmm. um and the girl went crazy like first of all they wouldn't let him in the hospital but then she had pictures of the, the dead baby and was sending it to everybody he knows like about time ask him about his baby and that, like she was going off and i'm like this don't look good for you sis why are you doing this but she was just going off and he like man i tried to go they ain't even let me in there so. well i'm gonna just can i come in on here mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to just say, if she did send out that picture and it was a deceased baby and you're making a point and you sent it to everybody else, then maybe you, you wanted everybody else to know that you was pregnant and you was accurate that the baby did pass, but did you kind of understand about the feelings mm -hmm. of that? So I just think that if any female that do, do things like that, you're trying to prove a point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think she was doing it for attention too. Like, right. She wasn't getting enough from him. Right. Now in retrospect, like, I get it. Like my brother be driving these joints crazy for real, for real. But they think they in love, and mm -hmm. then he's not in love or whatever. So I think she wanted more from him. She wasn't getting enough, or she wanted more of a reaction from him. He didn't give her nothing, so she started going to all his friends and his baby mothers and all of this stuff. It was really, really crazy. Okay, come on that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, well maybe she went toward his um, baby mothers and friends and everything. Maybe they felt like she didn't, cause you know, sometimes people would say just because you was bringing a baby that make it, maybe she got attached and wanted that baby by that guy. Mm -hmm. But you know, and maybe it was not for them. Mm -hmm. And she just wanted to prove a point, oh yeah, I was pregnant by him, and mm -hmm. oh yeah, 
you know, I did have a baby, and everybody probably said, well, no, that's not your baby. You really was not pregnant, or mm-hmm. yada, 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 yada. You know, but at the end of the day, if she want to go that hard, female, male, if you want to go that hard, then it's like you're trying to prove something, and yeah. you still want them myself. You and maybe he didn't want to be with her. He did. So, who knows? It might not have been your boyfriend. You might have been, quote, unquote, you know, like I said, a side chick. Mm-hmm. So, who knows? Yeah. yeah, I look at it like it don't count, really. Like, some women are still considered they your baby mama if they had a still mm-hmm. boy. So, can I come in on that? Yeah. yeah, you can come in on anything you want to. Because you said that it does not matter, it, it mattered because it was a wife. So, you might not, like you said, not attached to the baby. She could have been attached to the baby, you know. And I just think that it is important for that female. It's not going to be important for that male because you don't have to, you know, carry, carry it, no, go through it, no, get attached, you know, because you do get attached. Some men do get attached um, to the baby. For example, my brother had, a, you know, his baby, and his baby boy passed. But he passed once he was a certain age. So it mattered to him, to me, a lot more. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and she kind of accepted it a little more better than he did. So by him, you know, having that feeling, you kind of got attached because you like, you know, you wanted to see your baby. And I don't think none of us would want, I would, you know, to have a child. And some people really, really do, you know, want to have babies. Mm-hmm. And I did at the time, but yeah. it was just like, I felt like she killed it. She, her, um, her, Why though? Because like, I felt like she killed it. Like she had a baby daddy. And uh, I remember I told her, I was like, don't let that lady know why I stay here and all this shit, because she had called defects on her years ago. She mm-hmm. ended up doing that shit again. She started crying and stressing out. It's, it was just like, she was crying so much. I said, hey, man, I said, if you keep stressing out, you're going to kill the baby. Mm-hmm. And she kept doing it. So I was like, I just detached her. I'm like, fuck it, man. Like, I can't, I, I, I ain't really got no say so on nothing. Like, if it happened, it happened. So. I was just like, fuck it, man. She let the, the baby father's mom know where y'all say that? Yeah, she came mm-hmm. over in my room one time. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what the fuck you doing, man? And then, like, um, the lady called defense, and uh, she came over, and she she let she let him in the house and shit. And I, I, I yelled at her. And mm-hmm. she I was like, why the fuck you let her in? You know, the lady right. wrote the shit up and shit, mm-hmm. like, I'm angry or I'm abusive or something. But she shouldn't even just let them in. It just started a whole bunch of shit. Yeah. This a limit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. What is that? Okay. What's a, a healthy boundary you set for yourself? A healthy boundary I set for myself. Yeah. Um. First of all, pray. Amen. When I get up, you know, when I, I wake up, um, pray. A healthy boundary is eating a healthy, um eating healthy meals, treating people right, trying to do right, and helping people. So who, who helped you at your um, lowest point? Well, you know, I'm going to have to say this. The first person that helped me at my lowest point is the high power. Amen. But then, it's, you know, he put the people and the angels and around Amen. him to help you to move forward and get Preach. where you want to go. Mm-hmm. So if you don't have any of that around you, somebody that want to see you succeed, even if you're on your lowest, you know, and they still can come and help pick you up or lift you up or give you encouragement mm-hmm. or positive something to keep going, you know, and knowing that things shall pass or things ain't going to last forever, you know, what's the one? Do you feel like people should show thanks, like, uh, show thanks just like they show thanks to God, like, should I show thanks to people like that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The Bible say that. Yeah. We supposed to love. We supposed to love each other because we all His creations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Give so, that so well, you feel like that? Yeah, because I, you know, I do st- stuff for people, and they'll go on social media and say thank God. <laughs> but they, so, yeah. They ain't saying me. They ain't showing me things like they showing to God. So. I did it. Yeah, you did, because I had seen it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was said like, it. thank you, God, for sending it, bud. Right. Thank you, bud. Because, like, ultimately, God yeah. sent you, you know? But, yeah, I'm going to stamp it now. Don't ever right. do nothing for me. I'm going to tell everybody. Yeah, that's like me. 
I don't be tripping on if it's a friend or something like that, but it's just like somebody you with. Like mm -hmm. it's like they seem is they still start to take, take you for granted, like you just mm -hmm. supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. So I be looking for more things for me and because. You just be doing the most for them, and they kind right. of just like, well, you—that's what you're supposed to do. Do you think that there's a certain point in time where you can, you, where you're supposed to get comfortable in your relationship and expect as as things, what? like expect them to do whatever it is, like whatever y'all have established, just expect that it's gonna be cool. You don't have to reinforce it. You don't have to do like, okay, men start out being a certain way, and women, everybody mm -hmm. starts out being a certain way. But then eventually, do you think there's a point in time where you don't have to do these things no more? I just feel like it's kind of like saying excuse me and thank you in public. Just if somebody do a kind gesture, what's wrong with saying thank you mm -hmm. or excuse me? So I feel like that'll be normal anyway, like just saying that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like maybe every once in a while, just do some form and say thank you. Like mm -hmm. that, that ain't hard to do. Okay. But do you put out the same energy? Yeah, I, I pretty much, I mean, I be dating losers, so. Nobody's uh, a loser, that I pretty, much, <laughs> I pretty much have to do that, so. We pick and choose who we date. Yeah, he do. Yeah, I guess, um, you know, they say men pick, but women really pick, you get what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. you can try to pick the best woman you want, and she still got to say, okay, she still got to want to be with you, so. She picked her, though. Mm -hmm. She was still on your radar, though. For you to even attempt, mm -hmm. she chose to accept it, but I'm saying, you but chose it's just to like, pursue it. You just give them what you can. It's like scraps on the floor. Like, <laughs> you you just give them what you can get, basically. I don't think that y'all should do that though. Mm -hmm. Why you gotta people? have a? Why you, what you say? Why you people? Yeah, you gotta have a, a standard. Um, sometimes you just be want to uh, get off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Sometimes That's you honest. just uh, in, enjoy not being lonely for a short period mm -hmm. of time. That ain't somebody you pick to be with forever, though. Mm -hmm. That's a jump off. Yeah. I, I'm not getting what you're saying. Like, you don't pick those people if you if it was for a temporary fix. You don't pick them to be with for long term. It's like I just needed a hug today, so let me find this person to hug them. But yeah, I'm I saying I know. Yeah, they're not like a. Uh, long term thing but it's just like you just get with them to like I guess get your fix or whatever whatever you miss so you can't get your feelings caught up in that if you already know what you want are you going for it? so you can't get your feelings caught up in that if you just want to get your jock off like set up your fix or your hug or whatever you can't get your you know you can't call them losers because you pick them losers because you you had in your mindset what you wanted you had in your mindset where you was going you had in your mindset what you was going to do. So you cannot, you know, intake that and say a loser because women have that same mentality. They look at you and they probably say, oh, well, okay, then. I can get what I can get and I'm going to move on. But then when they see the next guy, like I said, you might get wrapped up. So she might see the next one. Okay, next. It's, you don't necessarily get wrapped up. It's just like at the same time, we fucking with each other. You still got to respect me. Right. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So long as the respect that we can do our thing, but it's just like, it's like, I'm not going to respect you neither. So that's when this shit just go bad. At. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You got to have respect. Respect is important. It is. No matter the relationship. Okay. Um, Something you hate about the old you and something you need to fix about the new you. Well, what I hate about the old me is picking up the old baggage. Every time when someone, you know, I say, okay, you cut out. But then come around, they find, you know, okay. Oh. And that, that's come with friends, mm -hmm. family, you know, or any, somebody, you know, you happy or somebody you're trying to help. Mm -hmm. If they screw over you, then I need to fix something. Like, you know what, when they come, it's okay to say no. Mm -hmm. It is. And what about you? What does he like about the new you? Or no, you need to change about the new you. Fix about the new you. Fix that man. Say no. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I love no. It's like my safe word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. When the last time you told Scat no? Oh, oh, oh. Out of the bus. All the time. All the time. <laughs> 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 
It shouldn't be like that. I know. Um, nah, it just gotta be. I try to do everything like within within reason. If it's like, oh no, nah, he would do this for me, then I try not to say no. But if it's something I didn't want to do, or like it just, I gotta really like I told you, I'm in this era now where I'm really trying to do what I feel like I'm supposed to do because of who I want to be for you. Well, you would be trying. Huh? Yeah, I did. Cause no, that's not me for real. So now I've trained myself though. So that's why it's an issue when I'm like exercising the new tricks, and then I'm like I'm not getting a treat. It's like hold on, wait a minute, where my treat at? Cause I had to give myself. I mean, I was I trained myself without treats, but now it was on the promise of expecting the treats. Like, what's the treat? What would be a treat for you? Um, I just, I'm simple, like, I just need to be heard, like, if I say something, hear me, not, oh, okay, and, like, it's, it's gone, like, or, okay, one of the, recently, I was talking about, okay, Scat's thing is money, 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 we gotta get money, I gotta work hard, Scat works seven days a week, I need money, cool, no problem, but what I say is, I told him, what if there's, what if it comes a time that, I asked, what's your favorite memory with me? He told me, cool. What if there comes a time where you can't do this anymore? He like, what you mean? Like, if you die or something? I was like, yeah. Because you're so focused on money that you're not really focused on making memories, which that's important. We need to make memories and have fun together, too. So he's like, damn, that's fucked up. I'm like, but it's real life. He's like, yeah, you're right. It is real life. And so I got quiet. I don't, I'm not trying to drag it to hell. I want to see what your input on this is. The next thing this man said out his mouth is, people just be putting a bunch of cheese on shit and making it look good. Right? <laughs> and so I'm like, what the hell? Like, we in a real conversation to me. Did you tell him to break it down to what he was saying? I just wanted to see what his response was going to be to hearing what I'm saying. But he didn't, he was just like, oh, damn, that's fucked up. Next, this post on fucking Instagram, I'm looking at people put cheese on stuff. And it's like, damn, like, I was really in this conversation. <laughs> so basically, it's like, fuck what you talking about. I'm thinking about cheese on the fucking taco or something. Like, you know what I'm saying? When I just want to be heard and really have genuine conversation and know that you received what I've had to say. So I don't, I don't ask for nothing too much. Just listen to me and let me know that you heard what I had to say. All I don't know is though, Terry. When I when a guy used to see me working, I used to work six days. That's the most you can work as a truck driver. Right? Mm -hmm. He was like, "Hey man," he said, "I know you like to make money," but he said, "I used to do that." And he said, "I look back at my life. I made all that money and it's gone now. Mm -hmm. I never got to enjoy my life. Mm -hmm. So if you ain't got to do that, don't do it." He mm -hmm. said, "Take a walk in the park, go to the movie, mm -hmm. enjoy your life." That's what I'm trying I ain't, to say. I ain't never forget that shit neither. It's important. Yeah. Like, money gonna come and it's gonna go. But that time, even like with my uncle passing, I think about, dang, like, I wish I could just talk to him. We, you know, I'd be in here, he'd be on the phone or he'd be listening to the show and like making comments and stuff. I wish I could talk to you. It, life is short. So that's what I be trying to have, like push on him, understand that. But he, like, well, we gotta have money to have fun. No, we don't. We can go sit and look at the stars for all I care. He ain't thinking about the stars. He ain't thinking about outside. He thinking about the money that he need in order to do something else with money. I at least do six days though, and he have a day set for y'all just to do something. Mm -hmm. Seven days is crazy. Seven days he in there. Work six and work uh, rest one. Yeah. So what about you? As far as what? As far as you saying, as far as work, you want to work six days. So what if your mate come to you and say, look, hey, um, you're working a little bit too much. Even if the money is there, you're the breadwinner, does not matter. But they want to spend more time. So are you willing to like drop some of the days and are you going to listen to your mate and drop some of those days and spend a little more quality time with them or with your family or for yourself? I'm or saying I, I didn't grow out of that. I mean, mm -hmm. for the most part, you really have to like, Force me to work over, like I know that's right. If I gotta work five, I'm working five, mm -hmm. and I'd be like, "Fuck y'all, don't call my phone." <laughs> no and I remember one time my job, they called me. They was like, "Hey man, we need to, uh, we need your trailer." Cause mm -hmm. I, I hook up to a trailer and I go home or whatever. 
And I was like, man, I'm not coming in. Mm-hmm. So you crazy? Yeah, this is my office. Okay, why are you even calling my phone? Yeah, I wouldn't even have an answer. You got to leave me a message. I'm going to read the little message that will leave you. No, yeah. I, I text back, though. Mm-hmm. I always text back. But, uh, yeah, I don't even like to work like that no more. Them days gone. I like to rest and chill yes. and enjoy myself. Yeah, I know that's right. Supposed to, for real. Because a lot of that money I made, that shit gone. Yeah. So, you know, enjoy your time. Yeah, right. Okay, um, the last dream you had, um, that had a meaning. The last dream I had, well, matter of fact, the last dream I had was this, this morning. Mm. Um, And that meaning in that dream is um dreaming about my ex mm-hmm. and i don't know what it was but somebody was following me as mm-hmm. i was going on doing things mm-hmm. meeting with people and it seemed like he was tagging along so i don't know if they dream me i'm gonna run into him i don't know if they dream me that you know it could mean anything mm-hmm. but that was the last dream and i just was like okay what that mean is he gonna try to sneak back in or is he thinking about me or was i thinking about him or? i was about to say you thinking about him you trying to right. go along for the ride you said you go back and let people in right but no not that one okay it's over stick okay. to that now right he it's might over. be looking for you you think so yeah, i think when you dream about people they think about you well i know i think that's my my thing if i dream about you you think about me and it's not just relationships like i, right. I got an ex best friend and there was a period of time where we first stopped talking or whatever where he would decide like no i'm going to bother you because i need to know like why we not friends or like we going to be friends again but i had already decided i'm straight on that whatever but every time when he was about to hit my phone i would dream about him before he hit my phone i have a dream and then i'd be like he probably gonna hit my phone and then he hit my phone oh wow I read it was a quote. It was like it said something about psychology. Like if if someone is all your if someone is always on your mind, they thinking about you or something. Like I that. think that that's been like my truth all my life for real. Wow. So that answered my question. Okay, he thinking about you. I guess so, but you know, hey. Mm-hmm. People make m- mistakes though. Like you know. My folks did that. It's like you can break up, like, and still make it work. Some people just yes. be on that. Oh, I'm when I'm done, I'm done. It's I'm like, done. You know. That's me. I thought that's a thing too, though. Sometimes you gotta reset. I mean, we don't know what he did, but right. sometimes you do gotta reset, or you know, like give it a break and see what they say. If you leave it and come back, then yeah, yeah, I think so. But I never had nobody leave and come back and like do right. It was like they were still on the same bullshit. Mm-hmm. Like your girl trying to come back. Which one? Your baby mother. My baby mother. Yeah, the daughter that you got. Oh, she not, she not gonna do right though. And it's like <laughs> how it you know like though? She drained me too much. It was just like I have to. She don't really work and shit. Mm. So it's just like it was just draining me. Mm, wow. And she wasn't like. It's not like she make up for by cleaning and cooking. It's like when she don't want to cook, she'll just not cook. Mm-hmm. When she don't feel like fucking, it's like I don't want to. You be like, I don't. It's no benefit okay. to me. Like, <laughs> I'm losing. What am I doing? <laughs> now, for I need something back. You, yeah. you need your treat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, something you apologize for? You did it again. Something I apologize for, and I did it again. Cussing out somebody for doing something, and then I go back to apologize, and they do it again, and I cuss them out. <laughs> Keep letting them come back. Mm-hmm. And cuss them out on that. They cuss them out again. Right I'm so sorry, but F you, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead, can't do your thing. Okay, what's something that we didn't ask you about that our audience should know about you? Um, is this concerning so it's concerning this interview or is it concerning about what I have going on? Yeah, Professionally yeah. everything. Everything, yeah. Everything. Well something that you're asking me about is what I do. Mm-hmm. Um and um why did I come here? Mm-hmm. Why did I want to come to, you know, on your show, um, and be heard and, you know, share my voice. Um, I came on here to, you know, just let but first of all, I'm going to say I thank y'all for even reaching out to me. Thank you for coming. And, you know, and giving me another chance 
even from the first one, you know, I could have made it, but I thank God again mm -hmm. for even offering me to come back. So that's a that's a awesome thing for me in 2024. Yay. Um second of all, you can ask what I do. So my skills of what I do, first of all, a hairstylist. I would like to shout out Boss Beauties. Okay. Um, which is on Columbia Drive. Okay. You know, um, we do have suites, you know. Hey. Columbia. Um, yes, Columbia Drive, right up here, Columbia Memorial Drive. Mm -hmm. You know, it's um 1220 Columbia Drive, I mean 1222 Columbia Drive, right behind the auto zone. Um, you know, we and we skills and everything. We do kids, everything. You braid or um, braid. We um teach. I want to shout out at Tanisha Carr. Um, she is the CEO, the owner. Um, she's a very Positive and good person, helpful person, mm -hmm. and um, we we do we do braids, sew ins, natural hair, you name it. You know, you just ask, you know, and if we can't do it, hey, we got your skill. We got somebody in the shop that can do the skill. The next one, um, um, when my birthday is in March. Yes, come on, happy so, birthday, um, Avery. So um, do it too. Hmm. You going to? Yeah, Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. uh, when's your birthday? April 17th. Okay, now. And then the round. So, you know. <laughs> I'm for Ryan. So, um, you got it, baby. You know, every, so that's round round. So, um, also, um, what I do on Instagram and why I'm on Instagram, uh, which I, um, put Dymo, which is an, um, artist, which she's a talented young lady. Um, and she's very skillful. And I, you know, like to be on, I like to help people. I like, I do my thing, um, networking. Mm -hmm. um, let me see what else, what else I got going on. Oh, I want to shout out Paper Chase Record. Let him rest in peace, Mr. Andre Porter. Awesome man, awesome man. Mm -hmm. um, what else? I like hey, that you really telling us, because the people be chilling. Huh? I like that you really giving it to us, because people don't be talking about their stuff. Oh, 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 yeah, well, they need to because y'all are to. awesome. Y'all, y'all made a platform where people can come and their voice to be heard, and that's very awesome. Thank you. So they should come and support. Um, you know, come support, get the ratings up, um, network y'all that because mm -hmm. you know I had a conversation today, not just going off on who I am, you know, but had a conversation today with a young lady, and um, she said some good things and most important. Most of the things everybody wants you to, to pay them, and they don't want to help you grow. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to help each other grow. Mm -hmm. And if we grow, everybody succeeds, mm -hmm. you know. And yes, we are in the game to succeed and to make money, you know. But you got to help each other to get there because y'all that are offering, and I'm, I'm gonna forget about me right now, and I'm gonna go to y'all, you know. Y'all are offering a pl platform. Or people should want to come in and help y'all because, like I said, it's spread it out of the word. Mm -hmm. And people tune in and they listen. It gives them an opportunity, also give other people opportunities. You know, for y'all to help other people to put out whatever they going on. But they have to also put that in that energy that y'all are giving out. Yeah. So Tell your friends to listen. Right. And watch. Oh, I'm gonna network you, believe me. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna like I said, push you and hey, yes, I want to say thank y'all. Thank you. Always, you know, because that's, that's me. I love good energy. If it's not good energy, I don't want to deal with it. Boo got bad energy, though. No, you don't. <laughs> uh, I mean, I just don't. You just like a. People see you as like a fun, giggly, and they see me as like I'm mean. And, I mean, I, I, I've been fine with it. I ain't never trying to come out of who I am and try to make people like me. You know what I'm saying? I made you talk more. I mean, I talk if I know you, though. I made you talk more. No, I mean, I talk if I know you. Mm-hmm. I made him talk more. You did? I did. But he don't, I mean, if you ask me, I, you know, you don't look me. I mean, you look mean, because people say I don't look mean. You know, you do. I mean, I'm just going to get to you, you know. You do. But then, you know. <laughs> People have to know each other. You know, you don't really have to know a person mm -hmm. to know that they ain't gonna take no jump from mm -hmm. you. You know, but that don't mean that you. We have to stop judging that outside of the books. Mm -hmm. You know, and if 
you aren't a good person, you know what I'm saying? Your vibe will know. You're not, you're not a good person. You're not a person you don't want to deal with. You're not a person like, hey, you can just look, like you said, look at your people, think you mean, or if you don't want to talk, maybe you got nothing to say. Sometimes I only have nothing to say. Okay. And I sit and just look like, uh-huh. <laughs> you know? So, at the end of the day, you to me, I don't even know you. You know, but I can I can tell you're genuine. Appreciate it. And I also, say thank you. Also, you know, good spirits. I like I said, I love good spirits. I think you got good energy too, I and you real much. honesty. I mean, real honest. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I like your answers to the questions. Thank you, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, anything else you want to put people up on? Oh, make sure y'all um go. Oh yeah, also now back to me. So okay, <laughs> so um got a um party going on this Saturday um for um Van Diesel and it would be at at Bistro um Bistro Spice Bistro. Let me get it right. Spice right. Bistro. That's on Memorial Drive, okay. um Warren Street and one in between Warren Street and this. Not this one, but Wine Street and they're going across the street from Grady. Little Grady on Memorial Drive. Um, and also, like I said, I have, Dymo has music. Dymo is, um, she likes to ghostwrite. Also, other artists, um, you know, that would be, there would be people in the building. And I, I like to do things, bring people out. Um, I also want to shout out Ramsey, 13 Love, Tai Chi. 13 Love. And I like shout out 13 Love uh, Performance, um, which we deal with the kids and um, teach them self defense. Um, I like shout out um, Angelique. I like shout out Save One Save All Foundation, which they one Save One Save All Foundation. Save One Save All of Them Foundation, which is um, an organization which during the summer times when it started in COVID, we got out, rain, sleet, and snow. And we fed the kids on site. Nice. And we still do that every summer, which we will start that back up again at the end of this month. Um, I would like to shout out um, Three Squares Cafe. That's who do the pack, and we pack, you know, do the delivery for the foods for the camps around um, to that area. So, um, like, shout them out. Um, and good, good work, ladies. Um, just shout out to everybody. Shout out um, Latoya. She started her own business. Um, shout out Sandy Warrior. Shout out all my cancer survivors. Our mother is a cancer survivor. We have a lot of cancer survivors, and some of us have lost a lot of cancer survivors. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to shout out anybody that's going through anything. I'm sick of sale, so um, I want to shout out to my sick of sale people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, keep going no matter what, you know, but I have learned to deal with it and learn how to manage it. So some don't, and I, I, I fear for the babies because I have been there when I had bad cases and I seen the baby sit there and say, mama, why it hurts? I can imagine what my mother and I went through. Yeah. Uh, or anybody, you know, with that. And I do like to shout out, you know, to some of these, to the families, you know, don't turn against each other, no matter what. Nobody, you know, don't turn, don't turn, don't help one try to beat the other one. You know, pull together and support each other. Mm -hmm. You know, don't damage. Um, you know, I don't know. I just have so much, but some things, you know, is is I can't, you know, regulate yeah. it and it won't come out. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, support. Support is the key. Support you know? is free. That's right. Yeah, it and is. love is free. Yeah, it is. You know, having each other back is free. You know, because sometimes you it'll be the person that you would think that would not support you, and them will be your biggest fan. Yeah, strangers. Right, because I am one of our biggest fans. Oh, Christ, y'all might be on that talking stuff. Okay. I'm not talking about <laughs> Y'all don't have, um, I mean, when I was growing up, they used to have, like, every summer, it was a place called the Hughes Center, and they would serve us, like, lunch every mm -hmm. day for That's the summer. So y'all, it's like a building, and y'all just deliver it to me. We we deliver to the summer camps. We deliver to after school programs. We de we deliver to daycare, and we also go out inside of the apartment. Mm -hmm. Like some people, I'm gonna just say for example, Cleveland Avenue. Mm -hmm. I'm shout out to Cleveland Avenue fam. Yes, you know. But um, we would go and we would actually 
put up the red tint, rain, sit, and snow, come out there with them bags, drag that cooler out there, and we would sit out there. And we would go and let people know we're out here. And kids would come out. So some kids don't get to go to the summer camp. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like we bring the camp, they come out, they socialize, and they go back in the house. But they know we coming out there. Mm -hmm. They stretching me. Cousin to get involved. Yeah. I'm calling. Yeah. Maybe you could put a building up for that though. That would be cool. Like an activity center. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have I a little cafeteria for the summertime. Or like rent a rec out. Because the rec centers be like $30 for a day or something. Mm-hmm. So they do. They, they do. That's why I said they do. We deliver to them. Like, we was they go on to sites. the camps too. Yeah. We was on site. Like, we, we, had, we had on sites and we had you know, they deliver it to camps. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, to recreation centers. Mm -hmm. They deliver it to recreation centers, back to kids. Um, senior citizens, no. Um, and also, I don't I don't want to forget McClam. I want to shout out um, John Soul Fire Food on John Road. Mm -hmm. First part. I want to shout out Mr. John, also man. He's a, a Navy SEAL, very, very well respected. And I worked it for him, and good guy, you know. Um, he does a lot. So, like I said, I, you know, I have, you know. You got the charities on deck. Mm -hmm. I'm here for yeah. it. I'm trying to do the service. Yeah. So, it's, it's good. Now, like I said, I, it's a lot in me. It's not just what they see mm -hmm. um, on there. Because some people do, you know, be on there and flex up. Mm -hmm. And some people are really not flexed up. The only thing that I don't like about social media sometimes is that they want you to net, help them, and then I get this, oh, I don't post nothing because, you know, what? they got to pay me. Yeah, that's lame. Right. But then you want somebody to, to post you, and they helping you. Why you cannot go by, stop by, show some love? They just should not a post. You know, mm -hmm. and just letting people know, hey, this is what's going on. Why can't you just put them in a remix like you remix in music? Right. So, that's just how I see it. I'm not saying everybody now. I'm not saying everybody. Because y'all show love. I know y'all see it. I watch. Yeah, basically, it's coming out my pocket. I mean, there's not much to maintain this, though, but, you know, it'll be good if I was getting paid to do it. Oh, you're you getting paid. You're going to get paid. You're much richer than what you think. Come on, speak it. Speak it. <laughs> you gotta monetize this, right. though. but that's the thing, though. You just gotta get on a better platform. I'm trying to say. Yeah, a great platform. Any platform, like I see a lot of comedians, like well, a few of them. They started off on um, what's the the serious radio? They used mm -hmm. to have bigger shows, mm -hmm. so they got popular off of that. And then by the time they started their podcast, they was already yeah. known. Mm -hmm. So by the time they start their podcast, they might have like 30,000 mm -hmm. subscribers on YouTube from the beginning. Yeah. So it'll be, you know, cool to get on a platform that's big as hell. Like, right. Because, you know, coming out the party, uh, pocket uh, marketing, mm -hmm. it's going to cost you. So I'm going to ask y'all this. How can I help y'all? Share it. Spread it. Send people. That's Encourage true. people to donate, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Even though I really don't be charging. The last person who asked me, I was just like, I haven't been charging. i just been trying to get content because I had stopped doing it for so long. Mm -hmm. So i just been trying to get people to come back home. You never gave up, so that's the whole key. Yeah, I can't stop. Like, I started. Come on. Can't. Nope. Yeah. Don't, don't drop what you started. You have to finish the job. Uh -huh. yeah. So, um... I guess that's it, man. Anything else? You might somebody came to your head again. Mm. Nah. <laughs> nah. I don't know. All right. Uh, literally, it's no pressure. Appreciate you coming and uh, yes, thank right. you. We gonna see y'all next week, man. And we out. Uh, we gonna pause like five seconds for the picture.